Green Bay closed its polls and city clerk Celestine Jeffries says the night was one word and that's exhilarating. But overall, Green Bay voters say election day went pretty smooth. In Green Bay, voters cast their ballots at the 27 polling stations across the city including Dorothy Metz. So I moved here for college in 2016 and I've just never left. She says this is her third time voting. My first year voting when I was 18 in the 2016 election, I had to stand in line and like miss my class for like an hour. She says voting in this election was one of the easier ones. It took me barely 10 minutes. According to Jeffries, Green Bay had 51,000 registered voters as of November 4th. But that number went up Tuesday. Three locations ran out of registration um, forms, so that's quite a showing. One complaint received Tuesday was that someone saw another person vote without an ID. They voted without an ID. I'll address that when we reconcile the poll books. Jeffries also said that she had ordered 37,000 ballots for the city, but had to order more of those as well because of the high turnout. We got in, got out, no problems. This is George Rubino's second time voting in a Green Bay election. Uh, the last one took a little longer. I had to register and everything, but it was pretty smooth too. For Stephanie Claiborne, this is her first time voting in Green Bay. No complaints from me. Nope. It was good. One of the closest races that we've been watching tonight is for Wisconsin governor. And we are getting a look right now at Tim Michaels, the Republican challenger, about to address his supporters. Let's listen in. Thanks everybody, thank you, and thanks for all the hard work that happened over the last, you know, two and a half, three months in the general and in the primary. Uh, I couldn't be more proud of people. Uh, unfortunately, the math doesn't add up. I just called Governor Evers and conceded. I wish the Evers family well. Um, we love this state with all our hearts. I hope that some of the problems that were identified uh, will be taken very seriously by the Evers administration. Uh, you know, let's not be in denial. MPS is broken. We need to back, we need to back law enforcement and uh, things need to be happening. I love this state with all my heart. People are. It's the greatest state in the union. There's tremendous work ethic here, great communities to raise a family, and uh, just the most wonderful people on the entire face of the planet. We're going to wait to see what uh, uh, Senator Johnson has to say. Certainly, plenty of people still waiting for to hear from him. People are, they're excited and they're obviously, um, you know, there you can see the signs waving, so there's probably some commotion or it looks like somebody is walking up. There let's he is. Let's Thank listen you. in to Senator Johnson right Thank now. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, thank you for staying up so late. <laughs> I don't know about you, this is way past my bedtime. Uh, so I, I just came out, uh, we've looked very closely at the numbers. Uh, we feel very confident that there's no way that uh, they can really make up that gap. Uh, but you know, I, I'm, not in a, I'm not going to you know, uh, declare victory until all the numbers are in, but I just want to give you guys the, the sense that uh, this race is over. You know. I think, I, I, quite honestly, I think anybody looking at the numbers would have to admit that fact. But for whatever reason, they're not willing to call it. But I don't see uh, torturing you guys anymore by staying up till, you know, for a couple more hours. Because who knows how long they'll, they'll take to actually call this race. So, uh, you know, we'll wait till all the numbers come in before I declare final victory. But, uh, you know, I do believe that uh, this time, uh, truth has prevailed over the lies, over the character assassination.
but, but I will say, I will say, unfortunately, it's still so close. And that, uh, that's a little depressing, isn't it? That, uh, that lies can be that effective. And if you, ever, if you ever wonder, quite honestly, why more good people don't run for office, I, I would just recommend people take a look at the Wisconsin U.S. Senate race in the year 2022. And you just might get that answer. But anyway, thank you so much for coming. Countless amounts of dollars, commercials, and campaign hours were spent on yesterday's election. It appears a lot will be staying the same in Wisconsin. I understand that there's a whole bunch of Republicans in the legislature and we need to work with them. And Democrat Tony Evers retains executive power while Republicans maintain firm control of the legislature. Fresh off his re-election, Republican State Senator Andre Jacques says that's one example of what's possible amid political gridlock. Democrat Governor Tony Evers provided his own while touring a school in Madison. Out of all the bills that uh, I received last year, uh, I signed two-thirds of them, and of those two-thirds, 99%, uh, I think maybe only one bill uh, didn't have some kind of Democrat on, on board in that bill. Evers also vetoed more bills than any other governor in state history last session. Jacques says the expectation should be any vetoed bill likely won't return unless it looks drastically different, including hot-button election issues like election reform. Another big issue not likely to be taken up legislatively is abortion. I think it's going to have to happen in the courts. If the legislature wants to put a proposal out, we'll certainly look at it. I don't want to foreclose the possibility of any conversation because certainly uh, I do a lot of work across the aisle, but that is uh, one area where I think there's, you know, quite a, a difference in terms of uh, kind of a democratic platform of abortion on demand at any time and uh, a Republican platform that is uh, very much in the other direction. Both sides say they'll try to work together when possible, but will stand tall when anything goes against their core beliefs. Fox 11 has new documents related to the error on Green Bay's election notice from last month and for the spring primary there were con contradicting reports. For when city officials found out the wrong time was posted for accounting absentee balance? Now, Fox 11 put in an open records request to verify the city's account of what happened. We received a response to our request. Fox 11's Ben Crumholz has been looking through the information, brings us balanced news coverage. In two weeks, voters will be back at the polls for a slew of local races. For the primary, Green Bay started counting absentee ballots right after the polls opened at 7 a.m nine hours before 4 p.m., the time the city told the public the ballots would start being counted. So certainly there was, you know, a very regrettable um, clerical error that was made with the notice, um, but in terms of the process itself, it was held as it's always been held or it has been in recent history. In a story posted on the Press Gazette's website the night of the primary, Mayor Eric Genrich's chief of staff, Amada Rivera-Wagner, was attributed with saying the city knew about the error before the polls opened. Yes. However, the next morning, Green Bay City Attorney Joanne Bungert told Fox 11 the city wasn't made aware of the error until about 11.21 a.m., more than four hours after the polls opened and ballots started being counted. Bungert denied Rivera-Wagner or any other city official knew about the error before the polls opened. To verify that, Fox 11 submitted an open records request for election-related emails and text messages Two are from Mayor Genrick, Rivera Wagner, and City Clerk Celestine Jeffries from the day of the primary and the week leading up to it. We received 33 pages of emails in response. None of them showed any indication the city knew about its notice error before the polls opened. The first email alluding to the error was from City Attorney Bungert to Mayor Genrick and Rivera Wagner at 12.16 on primary day. Bungert wrote she wanted to loop them in on the situation. She wrote while the law says notice must be given 48 hours prior, the language is silent as to specifying a time or any other requirements. The provision does state, however, that the canvassing cannot begin until the polls open. Most of the rest of the email is redacted, with Bungert telling Fox 11 those parts are protected under attorney-client privilege. The city did not redact a line saying the Wisconsin Elections Commission told Clerk Jeffries that continuing counting is within her discretion. Ballot counting did briefly stop at about 1121 when the city says it became aware of the notice error. However, the city says it resumed at 1224, eight minutes after Bungert sent that email to Genrick and Rivera Wagner. Counting then stopped again at about 2.30 after the Republican Party of Wisconsin sent a cease and desist letter to the city to stop until the publicly noticed time of 4 p.m. The day after the election, 
Fox 11 tried asking Genrick if it was the right decision to briefly resume counting after finding out about the notice error. As soon as the discrepancy was discovered, should the counting have stopped until 4 o'clock, the time the public thought it was going to begin? Well, my understanding is that once we received a letter from the Republican Party requesting that the, the count stop, then it, it did cease. Well, it did. Initially, it was at 11.30, 11.21, when uh, the clerk found out that there was the discrepancy, and then an hour later it restarted, and then it stopped again two hours later. Should it have stopped and stayed stopped, that initial? Well, like I said, once we received that, that formal request um, to stop from the Republican Party, it, it did stop and then restart at 4 p.m. But should it have stopped even before then, at the first stoppage? Yeah, like I said, once we got that formal letter, it was, it was stopped. The Wisconsin Elections Commission has declined to weigh in whether it was legal for the city to start counting ballots ahead of the publicly noticed time or to keep counting ballots after becoming aware of its error.